Good. Hey. Whoop. I go hard, cuz. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good today. Happy Tuesday. Goodness. It's already April. I'm just like, damn, the days are going by really, really quick. Um, I know it's been a few days since I've been live, so I'm like, okay, I got to go live today. It's a lot going on. I hope you guys are doing good. I had an awesome time on the East Coast. Um, it was really nice. I really enjoyed Washington, D.C. and Baltimore, and I got all the way down to Delaware. So I got a chance to go visit my family and stuff. So I had a really good time. I definitely had to go out to the East Coast more often because I just love it out there. How you just go from state to state within like a matter of like an hour, you're in a whole nother state. So I just love it. I hope you guys are doing good here. Let me see. I'm put my other screens. Give me just a second. Hey, y'all. Yes, I love the DMV. The DMV was great. And it was like crazy, like going out there and seeing the bridge, like everything that was going down in Baltimore, like the weather was kind of like gloomy um, in the DMV, like it was a lot of rain and stuff like that. But you could tell like everything that happened in Baltimore was definitely affecting everybody. I talked to a lot of people out there about it and it was just surreal to go there and like go to the spot where the bridge collapsed and to see it. It definitely reminded me of the collapse here in the Twin Cities. Like, I think I was like, I don't know, like 15 years ago or something. But um, yeah, definitely, definitely had a good time. So I definitely will be back um, soon enough. But I hope you guys are doing good. Oh, y'all like the color? I know that's right. Y'all know I have to switch it up every stream, okay? But um, it's a lot to get into. A lot of, you know, tea going on with Diddy. Um, I've just been trying to keep up, uh, you know, 50 Cent, Stevie J, they're back and forth. So it's very interesting, you know, as I'm like watching all of this play out, um, you know, the excuses that a lot of people make for this situation, um, you know, just all the weird empathy um, for Diddy and his clan. It's just, it's very interesting um, just to see like, people's opinions, right? Because everybody's entitled to their opinion, just like I'm entitled to mine. But it is very, very interesting to see the opinions of like the celebrities and, you know, the people attached to him versus the general public, right? You know, outside of 50 Cent. So we got to talk about this. Let me see what we want to, where, where do we want to start? Okay, let's start with 50 Cent and Daphne Joy. Now, let me ask y'all this, Okay. We got over 3,000 people in here. Y'all come on in, hit the like button. Some more people will come in here to know that I'm live. Come on in, y'all. So put a teacup in the chat. If you guys remember me saying this, like at least a few weeks ago, and I was like, 50 Cent might want to simmer down. He's doing a lot of talking and kikiing, but he got his own skeletons too. Okay, because I ain't forgot about when he allegedly whooped Daphne Joy's ass, trashed her apartment. Put a teacup if y'all remember me saying this a few weeks ago, that he needs to simmer down, you know, worrying about Diddy when he got his own domestic violence issues. Okay, you see the chat? Okay, thank you. So, again, 50 been out here doing the most, you know, laughing and, and joking. Now, I will say this. I had to go back and, like, find old, like, news articles. A lot of the stuff has been deleted off of the internet. I don't know if y'all know, and, and I guess... I probably have more privy to stuff just because I do a lot of deep dives. So I'm always looking for like archived stories and things. But I'm noticing the more I edit or I look into stuff, a lot of things are being deleted off of the internet. And I don't know if it's because the celebrities are requesting it or just what. But it took me a while to find some of the old articles from 2013 um, of the situation with Daphne Joy and 50 Cent. But what I could not find were the pictures. I don't know if I'm the only one, but do you guys remember the TMZ pictures from back in 2013 of her apartment ransacked, her door kicked in? Like, I remember those pictures. I could not find them anywhere. Like, I searched high and low. You can, you can barely find articles. I couldn't find the pictures at all. So, yeah, I've been noticing that a lot. So put a teacup if y'all remember the pictures and the door kicked in. Okay, Miss Sparkle says she remembers. Okay. 
I used the Wayback Machine. I couldn't even find it on there. Like, trust me, I was digging. I could not find the pictures at all. So, yeah, they're, they're scrubbing the internet of a lot of stuff. But y'all not got a damn photographic memory, so I don't forget shit. So even with us not having, you know, the, the receipts, right? We don't have the pictures. I still remember, you know, a lot of what happened. So I'm going to go ahead and um, pull up the article here from 2013. Well, no, actually, let's see here. Let, let's start with the 50 Cent poking the bear. We'll start with that before we even go into the articles that I found here. Let's see. Okay, so after I did my last video the other day, when um, when I edited that video, it was pretty early. So at that point, he hadn't responded. But then, of course, he took to his social media page and he responded. And he's basically asking for full custody of their son, Sire. So let me go ahead and um, pull up this article really quick here. So he was kind of like, you know, making fun of her and calling her a sex worker. Let me share my screen really quick here. Okay. So 50 Cent um, is reportedly seeking sole custody of his son after his ex-girlfriend Daphne Joy was named as an alleged sex worker in a lawsuit against Diddy. Fifth welcomed his second son, Sire Jackson, with Joy in 2012, and they split shortly after. U.S. Weekly reports that Fifth isn't happy about her being named um, in Rodney, Little Rod Jones's lawsuit against Diddy. Um, so long story short, you know, that went viral. And then, um, oh, hold on, let me see, make sure I have the, okay. Let me share this screen. So he kept kind of like poking at her and calling her a sex worker. So then she came out and this is what she said. Let me move this closer so I can read it. Okay. She says, everything is a joke to you until our safety is compromised, which is happening. You are wrecking the, you are wrecking real havoc, frenzy and chaos into other people's lives. How would you feel if Sire was the one in handcuffs for nothing? We moved to New York to give you the opportunity to be a father to your son, and you saw him 10 times out of the two years that we lived one mile away from you. I am tired of upholding and, protect and protecting your image to our son that you, have never, that you have never even earned. Let's put the real focus on your true evil actions of arring me and physically abusing me. You are no longer my oppressor, and my God will handle you from this point on. You have permanently dam damaged the last hope I had for you as a father to preserve our families with these last hold on, with these last final false claims made against me. You have broken our hearts for the last and final time. So that is what Daphne said. Then she goes on to say, I'm deeply hurt by the lies in Rodney Jones's lawsuit. The claim that I am a sex worker <laughs> is 100% false in character assassination. I'm retaining an attorney to explore our legal remedies against both Rodney and his attorney. Okay, sis. Then she says, I wouldn't wish this on any woman. God hears me and that's all that matters. Then he replies back and he says this. You moved, a while of, you moved a mile away in hopes of having another baby with me, but I was busy, so you moved back, and then you started receiving money. <laughs> then you started receiving money from Brother Love. Now here we are, a little sex worker. He's a mess. Um, and then he posted this, 50 Cent reportedly seeking sole custody of son. So um, he says, it is what it is. See you in family court, sex worker. Okay, so still trolling her. Um, so now let me go ahead and take you guys back to 2013. Now, again, I can't confirm or deny um, if he R'd her. You know, I wasn't there. So I'm not even going to go there with the R allegations. But we do know that there was domestic violence claims filed against uh, 50 Cent. Let me see here. So I'm going to... Share this tab here. So this was from 
July 5th of 2013. Alleged victim in 50 Cent's domestic violence case is a model and actress. So they're saying a Los Angeles woman whom 50 Cent is accused of kicking in, of kicking in a domestic violence incident is a model and actress who had a part in Pirates of the Caribbean. Daphne Joy, who was born in the Philippines, had a baby by the rapper and is now focusing on the safety for the child and herself. Now, if you guys don't remember this, nobody knew that they had a kid together. Okay, so while he's trying to, you know, I, I get a, I get him petitioning the court, but back then this was hush hush. Okay, nobody knew that they had a kid together, and here are the receipts. We didn't know that this baby was even born until this domestic violence allegation, because his name was not in the birth certificate, so nobody knew. This is another article from back then. 50 cents proves that he's not the father of ex-girlfriend's child. So there was a bunch of paternity, you know, disputes and discussions. Um, he was eventually found out to be Sire's father. So initially, um, yeah, the, the Zodical and him were, not, this was not like a happy blended family. This was a bunch of drama, okay? So anyhow, what they're saying, okay, this is what they're saying happened. Let me go ahead and share this article with y'all. So, they're saying Raptor 50 Cent has been charged with attacking ex-girlfriend and thrashing their, her Los Angeles home. The star is accused of kicking and injuring his former partner after breaking down the door to the bedroom that she had locked herself in. And those photos of the broken bedroom door were all over TMZ, but in 2024, they have been scrubbed off the internet. Um, he allegedly destroyed her property worth $7,000 during the altercation with the mother of the child the pair have, uh, that the pair have together. Police say they found broken chandeliers, damaged furniture throughout the woman's apartment. Officers also found a ransacked bedroom closet and the women's clothes thrown all over the floor. They said the rapper, whose real name is Curtis Jackson, had left the scene before the police arrived, okay? So again... He was charged with domestic violence and vandalism. So, again, I wasn't there. I don't know about the R allegations. That's for her and 50 Cent to sort out. But her accusations of domestic violence are very real. Um, I saw a lot of people saying, oh, she's only saying this to protect Diddy. No, she's not just saying that to protect Diddy. This happened in 2013. A lot of y'all were too young and or don't remember. But she's not lying about that. This is why we keep receipts on this channel, okay? Um, so let me see here. Afterwards, he was found, he was able to cop a plea deal. So let's go to this article. So around October of that same year, he was able to cop a, a plea deal and they ended up dismissing the domestic violence charge. Okay. So that was dismissed. Um, he also spent time trolling her online as well. And, um, you know, kind of clowning her. And then a year later, the other baby mama came out. Okay, this is why I said, you know, he needs to chill. He's doing a lot of, you know, poking at the bear when his, you know, backyard ain't clean. So the first baby mama, the black one, uh, Shaniqua Tompkins, she came out a year later. Because remember, him and the son, the older son, were beefing. This is the older son that, that looks just like him that he doesn't claim. He didn't show up to that child's graduation. And so a lot of people were reaching out to her like, you know, why did he not come to the graduation? Did you not, you know, tell him? And so she was kind of defending herself. And um, in this article, trying to find the thing here. Okay, later on in the interview, she details a physical altercation in front of then 10-year-old Marquise and his sister, who is her oldest child, when my daughter saw it, the abuse, that was my breaking point, she said. Tompkins confessed to cheating on 50 at the time. She maintained that it was after he allegedly cheated on her first. When he found out, he flipped out. When I got home, he lost it completely. Even my daughter walked in in the room and he was still hitting me, she recalled. I hate to sound like a battered woman, but it just bothers me. He really lost it. He broke down and cried. That's why I say it's so scary because he was hitting me in one moment. He's angry. And in the next moment, he's in my lap crying like a baby. It's a lot of issues there. In her mind, 50 is still dealing with childhood abandonment issues that stem from his mother's death. 
Over the years, he has created his own reality, one that Marquise is no longer affected by. He misses his dad and he loves his dad, she pointed out. Of course it hurts, but I think when a person does stupid things all the time, it starts to lose impact. Him just being him, I think Marquise feels sorry for him. So that's not one, but two domestic violence allegations. So that is why I said that a few weeks ago that he might want to simmer down a bit, okay? Um, again, we keep receipts here. And, and you know, please, before y'all sit here and be like, oh, you're a hater, you're just trying to bring down 50 Cent. Anybody who knows me knows I'm a big fan of 50 Cent. I love his music, okay? Get Rich or Die Trying, one of my favorite albums, okay? Like, I don't know, I'm just the type, like, I don't, I, I know how to separate the artist from the music. Like one of my favorite so 50 Cent songs, many men wish death upon me, blood in my eyes, dog, and I can't see. I'm trying to be what I'm destined to be, but niggas trying to take my life away. I put a hole in a nigga for fucking with me. My Mac on the wall, now you were gonna see. Better watch how you talk when you talk about me. Cause I'll come, okay, so again, I'm not no hater, bitch. Don't have me going to 50 Cent rap -thon, okay? So I hate when people are like, oh, she's just a, no, like, I, I really fuck with these artists, okay? I really fuck with the music, okay? Thank you, queens in the house. Y'all not ready? So, no, I'm a big fan of 50 Cent. I'm a big fan of his music. I respect his entrepreneurship. But, bitch, I got a job to do. Okay? I have a job to do. Don't have me start rapping and get, getting gangster. <laughs> okay, somebody said Drake who? <laughs> yes, Queens is in the building, okay? So, again, I'm not doing this to, like, you know, throw the black man under the bus. I provide receipts, okay? I'm a fan of these people's music, but TT knows how to separate the artists from the fuck shit. And I hold everybody accountable, okay? That's just what I do here. I hold everybody accountable. 50 might be one of my favorite rappers, but I'm still gonna call his ass out, okay? And I saw a lot of people attacking Daphne. Again, I'm not speaking on the art situation because I, I don't know anything about that. But per the receipts, they, he put hands on her. Allegedly, okay? And you know, again, those charges were dismissed, but there was some type of altercation. I still remember them pictures from the apartment. Showed y'all the receipts of the first baby mama saying the same thing, okay? So again, sometimes where there's smoke, there's fire. That's why I was saying a few weeks ago, buddy, you might want to simmer down. I fought with you and your music, but you might want to slow down, constantly poking the bear and making fun of Diddy because your backyard ain't clean either, okay? So, um... <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is my jam, child. Many men. <laughs> many, many, many men. Um, so now because of like, you know, 50 Cent constantly poking the bear and going at Diddy, Stevie J, honey, he done came out of nowhere and he's trying to have his best friends back, okay? Again, Stevie J, very talented man. Um Beat maker, producer, Honey is probably one of my favorite songs that Stevie J has produced. I've always given Stevie J his props when it comes to music, okay? He is bad boy, just like Mason Biggie. Um, he kept bad boy running, okay? But it just, it doesn't negate all this stuff that's going on, okay? So Stevie J wanted to fight 50 Cent. So we're going to go ahead and... uh. He's, he's tired of 50 Cent poking fun, of, poking fun of him and Diddy. So we're going to watch this really quick. Give me just a second. Okay. So we're going to listen to what Stevie J has to say to 50 Cent. Okay. I'll be I'll be I'll I want you to fade, fade nigga. Fuck, Fuck all that. that. Since it's entertainment... entertainment. Let me beat the shit out of you on TV or something. Don't duck that. I'm calling you out. What you want to do, Curtis? Curtis! Curtis, what's good, man? You and your feelings about Daphne? Is she with gang them? Or is it that you sucking little rod dick? I'll be though. I want you to fade, nigga. Fuck all that. Since it's entertainment, let me beat the shit out of you on TV or something. Don't duck that. I'm calling you out. What you want to do, Curtis? 
Curtis. Curtis. Not that ashy beard. <laughs> Give the camera 50 feet, sir. Okay. Um, you know, he's he's always trying to get a check. That's one thing he gonna do is try and get a check. So 50 Cent replied, the reason why he was replying to 50 Cent is because 50 Cent posted this. He says, new documents show that Diddy's um, allegedly used videos of Stevie J having intercourse with another man to groom men into having sex. So 50 Cent was posting this. And again, I don't, you know, like I said, we already debunked this. So this is some gay porn star. This was not Stevie J. We, you know, debunked this a while ago. So I don't know why. 50 Cent was using that as a receipt. That wasn't a live, that wasn't a reliable receipt. So now 50 Cent has come back and he's doubling down on the trolling of Stevie J. So let me share this here. So he posted this on his page and it says, Jocelyn Hernandez accuses Stevie J of gay porn addiction. Uh, Stevie J, Jocelyn, calling me gay doesn't bother me. Get your fade, nigga. I'm sorry, 50 Cent is just petty. So he had posted that, let me see, was something else he posted. Uh, receipts, Jocelyn accuses Stevie J of being gay. And then he posts, Diddy surfaces in public again, speaks on camera with Stevie J in tow. Okay, so he's still trolling Stevie J. And then as of 10 minutes ago, Stevie J just did an interview with TMZ. That's what took me a few minutes. I had to get that clip really quick. So we're going to watch this here. Give me just a second. We're going to watch this Stevie J clip uh, where he spoke to TMZ. He's coming with the cape to, you know, take up for his BFF, Diddy. All right, give me just a second to set this up. And he's also, once again, calling out 50 Cent. All right, here we go. I don't know what my, whatever someone does in their bedroom, that's what they do. I don't got nothing to do with that. I'm just here to say that I've never seen my man doing anything foul like they talking about. None of it. All of it, I, I mean, yeah. I, I've never seen it. I've known him for 29 years. And then it's like with guys like like 50, you know what I'm saying? Like Uncle Tom cats like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you now you want to put me, I don't know if y'all saw the post when 50 posted about me. Of course you guys see yeah. it. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, 50 has oh, yeah. been going after Diddy and everybody associated with him for months now, ever since the Cassie lawsuit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, you can't brush under the rug. I, I don't see anybody um, um, reporting about what um, tatted up Holly said about him beating her up and about, you know what I'm saying, his other baby mom said beating her up. I just look at it as, you know, he wants to bring the black community down worse than anyone else. How How is that so? I said what I said on my post, and I'm standing on that too. Now, since he didn't accept what my offer to him, and he want to continue to be a comedian. Why don't you go make some movies with Michael Blackson and don't talk about me? Hey. If you don't want to fight, if you don't want to donate to charity, donate your bread to charity and fight, don't, don't stop being a girl and talking about dudes. I find it funny that, you know. Wait, somebody said, why is he smiling like that? It's just a screenshot because we can't play the video live because, you know, TMZ, they'll get copyright. It'll get copyrighted. So that's why. I just took this screenshot. He just happened to be smiling. When they first cru try to crucify somebody, they go through the media first. And they're just flooded with lies and propaganda. I'm not concerned about this Curtis. I mean, this dude Curtis. You know what I'm saying? He's Uncle Tom, and that's just what it is. I'm going to speak on a thousand percent of what I know to be true about my God. His spirits are up. He's spending time with his children and his mother. You know what I'm saying? I'm working out. You know, he's, he's doing very well. I've known this guy for 29 years. See, I'm not just a guy off the internet trolling. I'm a first-hand witness. Stevie, it's my understanding that when the raid went down in Miami, you were, were you on Star Island or were you actually at Diddy's house? I know you were in Miami. I was, I was, uh, I was at his crib working in the studio. I was sitting outside the studio door and I heard a big boom. Now, mind you, before we get into this, I'm, I'm, I'm not a spring chicken, even though I look fine and you know, stuff. But I've witnessed some historical events of 
of excessive force, but not like this. Since um, Saddam Hussein or ah. Pablo Escobar. He, Okay, we, we're definitely going to get into this excessive force conversation because I am so tired of this, but we're going to let Stevie J keep on talking. Even Osama Bin Laden, I heard a big boom. So I'm thinking like, you know, a lot of people do work on the island all day long, so I'm figuring someone drops the materials. Heard it again. Turn my head, I'm hearing do, 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 do. Armored vehicles, three big armored vehicles come. Dudes jump out, I got 50 dots on my shirt. Screaming, yo, get on the ground. I'm like, yo, really? I'm the only one here. Took me outside, I asked to speak to the higher ups. I was under arrest. And they said, no, you're being detained. I want to speak to the higher ups. Spoke to the higher ups. Um, I said, am I under arrest? They said, no, you're not. Let me let you go. Boom, let me go check your bags. You don't have any weapons and all. I'm like, I don't have any weapons. Stevie, what did they take from the house? Were you able to see? I saw, I saw them take like a bag, a bag of uh, one bag. Well, did did they take electronics? Because they did in Los Angeles. I'm sure they took um, some um, electronics, some of the camera stuff and all that. Probably they didn't want um, him to get a look at what they were doing in his crib, like how they came with the armored trucks. Of course, they took all that stuff. All right, so I forgot here. Let me get back on the screen. All right, so y'all just heard what Stevie J had to say. Um, somebody just sent a super chat, and they're saying that they found the picture of the vandalized house. Let me see who just... Uh, Shauna K says, T, I found the picture of the vandalized house. Shauna, can you post it in the right now in the chat so I can click on it, we can share it? I don't see, I don't know if she's posted it, but if you have the link, please post it in the chat so that we can look at this vandalized house together because I'm, I'm not going crazy. I remember the house being vandalized and being a mess. But so that is what Stevie J is talking about. I guess he was there on Star Island. We all know, you know, that's his second home child. Um, so he was there when the raid went down. Now, another person who is also speaking out as of today, I don't see the link yet. As of today is Misa. So Misa, AKA Justin's mama. Now remember a few months ago, she was blasting Diddy when Justin was out here acting bad and getting drunk and getting DUIs. And she was saying that, you know, Diddy is the leader of the family and a, a fish head rots from, a fish rots from the head up, from the head down, excuse me. And she was saying that she was calling Diddy out. And so now she's back, you know, writing another dissertation y'all. And um, she's very upset about the treatment that her grown ass son got by the police. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna read to you guys what Misa had to say. She also provided video evidence of the raid as well. So let's mosey on over to Misa's page. Child, let me refresh this. Let me pause it. Okay, let me share my screen real quick here. All right, so this is this is Misa. So she posted this earlier today. She says, the overzealous, overtly mi militarized force used against my sons, Justin and Christian, is deplorable. If these were the sons of non-black celebrities, they would not have been handled with the same aggression. The attempt to humiliate and terrorize these innocent young black men is despicable. Enough is enough. Did Justin need several laser beams from firearms pointed at his chest? Did Christian need a gun pointed at the back of his head while he was handcuffed? How many times have we seen unarmed black men not make it out of these types of situations alive? My son's attorney, Jeffrey Litchum, is investigating the excessive use of force, which was unnecessary and certainly not required by this search warrant. We will fight for justice, utilizing every imaginable, imaginable resource. I'm not with the propaganda. So that's what she wrote. We're going to watch the video real quick. And of course, the blue check marks are all in the comment section, you know, uh, you know, just agreeing with what she said. 
There's no audio on here either, so uh, maybe I'll just, you know, give my little commentary chat. So, okay, so this is the video. They're pulling up in tactical gear, um, armored tanks. You know, this is a big compound. You know, there's not a fucking crackhead in comp a crack house in Compton. I mean, this is a huge compound. So, of course, they're going to come in deep because they don't know what's, you know, what to expect. They're flying drones in. So it looks like they got one of the boys. I think that's Christian. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's Christian. So there comes Justin. They got a beam to his chest. Beam on his back. And I don't know who that is they're walking out. Okay, so that's the video right there. So, let me come back on the screen. We got over 9,000 people in here. Shout out to y'all, child. Come on in. You know, at the end of the day, let me, let me say this, right? <clears throat> As a mother, let me, I'm looking at the right camera. As a mother, right, I have two boys. You know, would I ever want to see my own kids in that situation? Absolutely not. It, it is scary, you know, to see your children, regardless of their age, have guns and lasers pointed at them. But what's also very interesting is she has more smoke for the police than she does for Diddy. I'm trying to figure out who tipped him off. How was it that Stevie J was there, the kids were there, but Diddy was nowhere to be found? Her anger needs to be directed at the daddy, okay? All of this has come about because of Diddy's actions. Now, and also in that lawsuit, if you remember, Justin was allegedly involved where he watched his father shoot one of his friends or whatever. And they covered it up and said that that man got shot in a drive-by. Remember, there was blood all over the bathroom and everything else. So it's very interesting that Justin is being accused of, you know, covering up that. You know, not having any empathy for this black man that his father shot, allegedly. But now, you know, everybody's supposed to have all this undue empathy for him having a laser pointed at him. I can say this. I can see a lot less mistakes happening with this situation because it is high profile. Because of who Diddy is, because of who the children are, they're going to make sure to cross all T's and dot all I's. They're not going to just show up at this house. They, they had to get two judges to basically okay this raid. This wasn't where they just showed up and decided to raid the house. These are some serious accusations. And obviously, they have something tangible for them to even take it to this level. Again, had Diddy been acting accordingly and just doing the right thing and not trying to act bad and, and you know, be involved in all types of fuckery and sex, tracking, sex trafficking, allegedly, he wouldn't be in this situation and neither would his sons. So the blame is on the father. At the end of the day, the tactical team were doing their job. Another reason why it's hard for me to like really feel bad, because I don't know if you guys know this, but this happens to regular people's children in everyday America. One of my best friends growing up, unfortunately, his mom, you know, she was a single mother. She struggled. She had several children and she got involved in the drug game. You know what I mean? Because to make ends meet, right? Single mom, no father. She got involved. And, um, you know, he still has PTSD from those raids. You know, imagine being a kid and they're kicking down your door. They're cutting up your teddy bears, breaking your toys because they're looking for drugs. They got guns pointed at the babies. This happens all the time in America and nobody gives a damn. My friend is now in his 40s and he still has PTSD from that. And then them having to be split up. You know what I'm saying? So for me, like the fact one, they're grown, so they're able to process it. 
once everything was done, they were uncuffed. They went home. They had dinner. And, you know, I'm not saying that they're not suffering any type of possible PTSD because that's still a scary situation. But what I'm saying is that this happens all the time in everyday USA. And the reason why children get caught up in stuff like that is because of bad decisions that the parents make. So it's hard for me to have all this undue sympathy for them. They will be all right. They will be okay. Even now on social media, everybody's catering to them and, oh, you know, sending them prayers and well wishes. And right now there's probably a kid in any town you will say whose door is being kicked in because their daddy's selling meth to make ends meet. Not excusing it because, again, it's the parents' fault when things like this happen. But there's, you know how many kids that, are, that I grew up with alone in the hood who were traumatized because their doors were kicked in? And there's no therapy. You're split up. You're taken into foster care. So, you know, forgive me if I don't have the same level of empathy for these, you know, pampered celebrity children who by, the, the, by what was written in the lawsuit are very much involved in the fuckery. The only one that hasn't been named as being involved in this nonsense is, Qu is Quincy. But Justin's name is all up and through the lawsuit. So is Christian. So again, I, I just, I don't know. I just, I feel no ways. Um, it is sad, of course, as a mother, you're going to feel sad, you know, that your child is in that situation. But obviously somebody taught them this. For them to think that that's how life works and that that type of behavior is okay. So the smoke should be on the parent. Just like when this happens in the hood, nobody's really blaming the police. You're blaming the parent. You shouldn't be selling drugs. You shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. You put your children in harm's way. So that's the same mentality I have for Diddy. I'm not really blaming the tactical police. They're doing their job. And honestly, to me... They were probably more safe because of who they are, because of their celebrity. Can you imagine if the gun accidentally went off? How much of a shit show and, and a firestorm that this would cause? But we've had regular people's homes get raided where the children, you know, came out of a closet and scared the officer and were, you know, accidentally shot. So trust me, they definitely went into this situation extremely careful. So, I don't know, I just feel like they were doing their job and this happens all the time. They weren't coming to, you know, pay them a visit and see how they were doing. They were told that there's drug trafficking, sex trafficking, there's weapons. So they're going out for the warrant. Everybody saying, well, like, you know, Stevie J saying, well, this is not El Chapo and, and this and that. They don't know that they're going into a situation. And somebody said it perfectly, Breonna Taylor. They came into her home because of a drug warrant and she ended up dead. So she's lucky the only thing that happened to her children is that they sat them in that nice ass grass. That grass looked comfortable as fuck. Manicured. And they sat there until they were done with the raid. So I, I, just, I, I don't have a whole lot of sympathy for the Dittler and his crew. Especially... If what they're being accused of is true. And again, I'll be fair and say that they have not been charged yet. But where there's smoke, there's fire. I don't see them doing raids at the same time at multiple houses just to be doing it. Just to be embarrassing this poor black man. I, I just don't see that. It's been a long time coming for him. So if he's innocent... It will be proven in court. But this is what they do. When they're coming to raid a home, that's what happens. They kick in the door, wave in the 4-4. You know what I'm saying? That's what happens. So, you know, you can say that, oh, if this was a non-black celebrity, this wouldn't have happened. It sounds good, but again, this happens in everyday America. This happens in Compton. This happens in Minneapolis. This happens in New York. It happens in all types of cities where children who are way younger than your grown ass children. Because again, Christian just turned 26 the other day and Justin is 30. 
You have babies who are in situations that their parents put them in. And they don't get to just go home and go to a relative. When they get involved in raid situations, they end up in somebody's foster care system, in somebody's home in the middle of the night. So yeah, this is just how it really gets. It is what it is. Um, so that is what Misa had to say about the situation. And again, I don't think it's propaganda. Like what, what propaganda? They were, they were being served. They were responding to a, a warrant. So there's no propaganda. So I just, I just find the whole situation interesting. So now, um, let me read a few of these super chats and we're going to segue and talk about some of the other celebrities that are speaking on the Diddy situation. Did she ever post the link to the house? I didn't see it. Maybe I missed it. I'm trying to scroll up and see. If she did, if y'all can repost it, because I, I still don't see it. Okay. Um, Sagba947 sent 9.99 says, went to see Cat Williams Saturday. I had a ball. Love you, T. Yes, I'm so glad you had a good time. Shout out to my tea sippers. Remember Friday, I'm going with some of my tea sippers and friends. We're going to go see Cat Williams in the Twin Cities. So I know a few tea sippers are driving into the Twin Cities uh this week so do not forget i have everybody's tickets so we're all gonna go see cat williams together live and then probably kick it afterwards so i'm super duper excited i'm glad you had a good time so i am ready um you know i know monique is still opening for him so you know hopefully she tells some jokes i don't want to hear rants and raves about her child i want her to make me laugh okay so thank you and i'm glad you had a good time uh, let me see here la portia Savage says, this about to be good. I'm sick of Nick's dusty, fertile acts. <laughs> um, the interview with him and Umar didn't help his persona at all. Yes, we're going to definitely get on that as well. So thank you for the super chat. Uh, let's see here. JTV says, hey, auntie, can't wait to meet you one day. That is awesome. Thank you for coming through. Uh, David Camarillo sent 4 dollars Thank you so much, David. Uh, Miss Tonisha says, thanks for all the deep dives, Discord gang. Also trying to become a massage therapist. Love you, T. Uh, you are so welcome and thank you so much and good luck on your journey through to being a massage therapist. Um, that's definitely a really good line of work. So thank you so much. Let's see here. Shy B sent $20, says, hey, T, hope all is well. I was in Delaware and New Jersey visiting my family late last week. Okay. How ironic, I was out there as well. I was having like a mental breakdown going across some of those bridges. Cause I had to, when I left Delaware, um, they wouldn't let me bring my rental car back to Philly. So I had to drive with my rental car back to DC. So I had to like get up at like 2.30 in the morning and drive from Delaware back to DC, which was like a two and a half hour drive. At, so imagine crossing the bridge once I got into like Maryland. And you know them bridges in Maryland are already like they already creep me out because they're over the water and all that stuff. And it's like three o'clock in the morning. I'm like having like a mental breakdown on telegraph. Like, oh, I'm about to cross this bridge. And I saw I was on that bridge for like five minutes, just like trying to get across it, having another panic attack. So that was like probably like the scariest part of me being out there is driving across the bridge at like three o'clock in the morning, just trying to make it to the airport, trying to get out to DC. So yeah, that was that was crazy. My East Coast adventures are always really interesting, I swear. But I hope you had a good time on the East Coast visiting your family. So I know I know I did. I had a really good time seeing them. Uh, let's see here. TJ says, Mayno had me tight and Diddy must have dirt on him. This is not a situation of coin uh, Pro. These folks want excuses for Diddy's bad behavior. I agree. We're definitely going to get into that as well. Uh, Jose Contreras, Sam 499 says, not celebrities trying to delete stuff, but T don't forget shit. Love you. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, Jose. Thank you. Uh, Joshua Young says, I love it when I catch you live. You look gorgeous as always. Thank you so much, Joshua. Appreciate you. Um, uh, by Medbia. 
uh send some money from south africa thank you so much sis says it is 145 here in south africa about to sleep i will catch the playback long live lovely t viva lol thank you so much i appreciate your support shout out to all my south africans y'all really be tapping in at like one o'clock in the morning i appreciate y'all so much uh wavy taste sent 49.99 says hey auntie it's your favorite soldier here he says, I find it disrespectful that all these men who also have skeletons in their closet and allegations against them are running to defend a man who has done some of the most disgusting things to innocent people. It's sad. Yes, it really is. You know, again, birds of a feather flock together. That's how I look at it. Um, but we're definitely going to, I'm, I'm going to talk more about that. Because again, if you guys have watched my deep dives, I've made three volumes so far. Just... Even this lawsuit aside, the things that Didi have, has done to people is just disgusting. You know what I mean? So, but we're going to get on it. Um, but thank you so much, and I hope you're having a good day. Uh, let's see here. Desiree Webster uh, sent two forty nine says, T, I'm a broke student, but I want to show you some love. Oh, I appreciate you. Like I said, y'all don't have to send any super chats. I appreciate y'all just showing love and support to my channel. It means a lot to me. So thank you so much and hang in there with school. You know what I mean? Eventually it will pay off. So I appreciate you, sis. Um, let's see here. Corey Bell sent six ninety nine. Sis fifty came into the game. Um, blackened fifty is the goat. <laughs> he, I mean, fifty definitely has some hits, honey. I, I'm not. I would never take that from fifty cent. So thank you. Let's see here. Leah sent 999 says, I appreciate you, T. Looking gorgeous. Thank you so much, sis. Appreciate you. Uh, Kiera Jackson says, I'm trying to send my first super chat on my 28th birthday. Love you, T. Happy birthday to you. Thank you for tapping in. I appreciate you coming through, sis. Um, what 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 month? What is like what what birthday sign? Because y'all know if it ain't Leo, I don't know. Are we is it Aries? Because I think Pisces season is over, if I'm not mistaken. What zodiac are we in? Yeah, the only thing I keep it with is Leo. Aries. Okay, well, shout out to all the Aries. All right, we see y'all. Okay. <laughs> all right, Aries is in the house. All right, so let me see here. Is Aries a goat too? So Aries and Capricorns are both goats? Chad, I don't know. The only thing I know is a lion. Um, let's see here. Uh, Selena says, Many Men is my favorite 50 Cent song too. Yes, honey. I love that song. I know that whole song by heart. Oh, it's a ram. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So Aries is a ram. I'm sorry, Ar uh, Aries people. Okay. So you guys are the ram. Capricorn is the goat. Okay. Because my oldest is a Capricorn. But I was confused by the little horns on the emoji. Okay, so it's a ram. Okay, interesting. Once again, the only thing I know is the Leo. <laughs> is the lion. <laughs> Wait, somebody said, okay, so Capricorn is a fish slash goat. Okay, that's cute. Now, I do know the Libras, though. Libras is the scale. Because, you know, that's my favorite sign outside of Leo's. You know, the, the L's got to stay, you know, the L's got to hang out and, you know, support each other. So... I know they're like a, I don't even know what that purple sign is that you put in here. It's like an N and a P. What purple sign is that? What zodiac is that? Is that the Capricorn zodiac? Oh, I don't try. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Shout out to the Capricorn. <laughs> it ain't Leo or Libra. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm like, what is that purple thing? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Child, they about to have a damn Zodiac war in here now. Okay, let me see here. Miss um, Scully B. What's up, Miss Scully B? She says, hey, sis, you look beautiful. Have you heard the leaked audio of Meek Mill and Diddy allegedly? I heard it when it first came out. I didn't want to be messy because, again, I don't like to post stuff unless it's factual. But that audio scarred me, hood, y'all. <sighs> I was like, oh, it just, the room probably was just funky as hell, child. Meek just, and then what, what's up with the song with Meek talking my I hope God forgives me for what I did with Diddy. And I thought it was AI, but they said that's a real verse in Meek Mill's song. 
So I don't know what Meek Mill got going on. Then there was a video they posted online with him and Lil Baby. They're on a private plane and they're under the covers and Lil Baby's just giggling like a schoolgirl. Like what the fuck is going on with these rappers? I mean the, the sassiness, honey. Yeah, they said Meek Mill was getting his back beat up. I don't know if y'all heard the audio, but I, I we weren't going to post it. I told my dad, I said, don't post it. Because, again, I didn't know if it was real or not. You know, we just want to stick to, you know, receipts, things that have gone through a courtroom. So I didn't know if AI made it, but it was very disturbing. He sounded like his butt hurt. He was screaming. Yeah, it's a very disturbing audio. They said allegedly, again, allegedly. It's, um, yeah, it sounded horrifying. Like Diddy was, you know, just, and he was, ah! But like I said, I don't know if it's AI generated or if it was, you know, the real thing. But I said, either way, that's some nasty work. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I listened and just kept on scrolling. I said, yeah, I could have went my whole life without, you know, hearing the alleged audio. Yeah, child, had to, you know, I was clenching my cheeks. Ooh, sounded painful. <laughs> Somebody called him Cheeky Milk. I'm not fooling with the chat, child. I'm not fooling with y'all. Whoo! Scully B done started something in here. He's like, yeah, daddy. Take that. Take that. Take that. <laughs> that audio was a mess. That was a mess. Uh, let me see here. Uh, ooh, hold up. <laughs> Mandarin's 91 says, T, laugh my ass off. You caught it on Misa somewhere typing in the background. Yup. I told you, I said, give her a few days. Misa going to be coming out here with a dissertation, writing her little heart out. Um, so, yeah, Misa's, Misa's funny. She's funny. But I, I get it, you know, as a mother. I, I get her not wanting to see that and feeling bad because that's her child. But, you know, from what we're seeing, your child is involved in a bunch of mess. Um, let me see here. Young Kobe, what's up, young Kobe? He says, T, question, black Americans have adopted hip hop. It's a part of our culture. Do you think that these artists feel the pressure to live what they rap? Do you think us as fans subconsciously allow this behavior uh, manifesting? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I do feel like, you know, with all this stuff in hip hop, you know, you can't, plant these seeds and then think that, you know, a segment of the population is not going to fall for it hook, line, and sinker. Um, I do also feel like a lot of things in hip hop were, it was planted. It was planned that way to kind of affect the black community in a negative light. And the reason why I say that is that you don't see these same lyrics being geared towards the Asian community, the white community, even when the the few white rappers who have become popular over the years, their music is not super violent. They're not talking about doing drive-bys. They're not, you know, talking about being in gangs and gang initiations and stuff like that. So I do feel like a lot of the things that has gone on in hip hop was definitely by design. And so what ends up happening is that now, a lot of these rappers who made their money off of the fuckery, right? Because again, that was their whole thing is, if we rap about positive stuff, it doesn't get played, it doesn't get pushed, which is very true. You know, when they would make good music about, you know, doing the right thing and, and you know, happy music, it does not get as much push as music that comes from the fuckboy manual. Meaning music that talks about raping people, hurting people, you know, and everything else. So, I feel like us as fans, you know, we have to decide what we allow, you know, what we want to see and what we don't want to see. Oh, hold on. My light is messing up. Hold on real quick. Let me, this light is in here flashing. Give me just a second. I got 10,000 people in here. I don't want this light flashing in my eyes. Hold up. Where's my little uh, thing? My little be right back. Oh, 
Okay. All right. I'm back. I'm sorry. I had to run back there and unplug one of the lights. It was like shortening out or something. But um, I don't want y'all to see my sweatpants. <laughs> I have on pants. People are like, she probably sitting in her drawers. Now I got on some pants. I just didn't want to see my sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> I had to like turn one of the lights were like flickering so I had to like go and turn that off real quick it was like messing with my eyes <laughs> okay but um like I said you know as far as hip-hop there's a it, it, it just all depends on what people choose to listen to like People can complain about Sexy Red, but somebody's listening to her music, you know? But it is very interesting how they push out certain types of music, but then other music that's more positive towards the black community, it does not get the notoriety and the spins. And I think this is why a lot of these rappers, especially the ones that are getting older now, who came up off of rapping about drugs and guns and violence, why now they're trying to act woke and, you know, act like, oh, well, I'm, I'm above that now and this is the new me. And that's cute that you've turned your life around now that you're a millionaire and now that you're set and your family's set and you build generational wealth. But again, I, I have to go back to quoting um, Rod Wave when he said, you know, Jeezy told us to sell crack, but his son went to private school. So that's the part that's like always like, that's the part that's really hypocritical because it's like you notice all their children are never involved in the shit that they perpetuate to us and and our kids and that's where as parents you have to talk to your kids and let them know like yeah you can listen to that music but you need to understand you know the dangers if you follow that lifestyle like that is not reality these people are not living that life and i think for me i was taught that at, at an early age that most of the stuff that these people are rapping is not real. You know what I'm saying? That the, a lot of them still work a nine to five. Um, you know, they're not really about that life. People who are really about that life, who are actually doing dirt in the streets, they're not rapping about it. You know, so a lot of these people are studio gangsters. So that's where the parents have to come in, you know, like really give their children game and let their children know, like, you know, because you can't control what people listen to, right? People are going to listen to what they want to listen to, but they need to understand that that's not real life. That's not reality. So I hope that answered your question. Um, let me see here. Crystal Mabone said five, says, oh my God, lovely tea. This is my first live. I love everything about you. You're beautiful. Thank you so much and welcome. Thanks for coming through. We have over 10,000 people in the house and we only have 3,000 likes. Something, the math ain't mathing, okay? I need more likes. Please hit the like button, y'all, um, so you can get more people in here. Uh, Sue Yu Sen Fai says, hey, T, it's my first time sending a super chat. Thank you for all you do. Your videos make cloudy days super bright. I love you. Love you, too, and thank you so much. I appreciate you, sis. Um, let's see here. Uh, Tranquil Living sent 199. Says, Diddy said every man is for himself. He knew. Mm. That's very interesting. I still find it interesting that he wasn't there. I really do. Um, yeah, Amber says subscribe. Yeah, if y'all are new, subscribe. Somebody told me I only need like 5,000 more subscribers to hit a million. I didn't believe them. I thought I needed like 50,000 or something. They're like, no, your math is not math. You only need five. So if you're not subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Thank y'all for telling them that in the chat. Uh, Sin Kowali sent $49.99. Thank you so much, sis. She says, this takedown was mild. Kids weren't thrown down. Remember when people were calling the police for fake bombs? A whole innocent person died. These police were beyond respectful, more respectful than usual. She's upset that her kids were arrested. Exactly. And that's what I was saying. When I watched that, I felt like they were handling them with a lot more kitten gloves than the average person. You know what I'm saying? If you've ever watched a raid happen, like if you grew up in the hood and you've ever watched a raid happen, they're not handling them as nicely as they handled those those kids or whatever those grown men i mean they're throwing people down they're yelling they're cursing they're you know it's it's insane i remember when the jamaicans across the street sorry well i don't care this is a long time ago i was a kid but i remember we had these jamaicans that lived in our neighborhood and their house got raided and um it was scary like we just all sat there on the block and watched and i remember the one jamaican man was just sitting on the steps crying and stuff you know what I mean? So it's it's sad. 
but they were doing dirt. So, I mean, it's like, yeah, you're crying, but sir, you're also like moving weight and doing all types of dirt and shit. And then after the raid, everybody just went over there. You know, whatever the police didn't take, everybody, well, not, well, you know, some people went over there and just, you know, took all their Jordans and jerseys. And <laughs> Never mind. Um, Next, uh, let's see here. Uh, Ariel the Aries says, yesterday my birthday. <laughs> What's my birthday? Aries Nation, it's a ram, laugh out loud. Shout out to you. Shout out to all the Aries out there. Happy belated birthday, sis. <laughs> they did. I, yeah, our hood was a best child. <laughs> Somebody said, not the labor, not the neighbors looting. They did, child. But I tell you, every, the next day, folks had on Jordans. Jordans that didn't even fit people. Like, you got them from the Jamaican's house, huh? Because they had a lot of shit. They went in there and picked everything, took their tea. Whatever the police did not take in that raid, shit. Crackheads was in there. Food was gone. And then one of them got out the next day, and he was just, you know, he was telling me. And I'm, I'm a kid, you know, but I've always been one of them kids. I don't know, like an empath. You know, I've just always been empathetic. And they were always nice to me. You know, they were always really nice. So, you know, I'm nosy side. You know, I went over there like, you know, well, how y'all doing? And, you know, he was just crying. And he was like, they took everything. That fucking crackhead, he took everything. He even took the food from the refrigerator. <laughs> he did, yeah. It was a mess. It was a mess. They did. They, you know, and then it's like, what can you do? You see people walking around the neighborhood with your jerseys on. What are you going to do? Nothing. So, they eventually moved. They eventually moved, yeah. So, I think, you know, they really... This raid at Diddy's house was pretty decent. Like, none of the neighbors went there and took anything. They didn't, you know, the house got towed up. But from what I saw, nothing was picked over. Because if that was in the hood, all, you know, all that shit that was in Diddy's closet, people would have took it. That's just what happens when people's homes get raided. People go in and loot. So, I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But I think that the, the Combs family, they fared a lot better than most. Okay? Because most people's homes I know that got raided, like, the neighborhood goes and they, you know, pick through shit and loot and take their food. And I'm just saying. <laughs> yes, refrigerator be emptied, uh, Ayana. Yes. So when they come back, it's not just the police tearing up like there's nothing left. So I, I'm going to just say, you know, the Combs family, they should be very happy that that's all that happened is that their closet got messed up. And none of the neighbors, you know, came in there and took up all they shit. <laughs> okay, let me go ahead and get on to the next topic. I've been out here for an hour. So, shout out to, we got over 11,000 people in the house. Shout out to y'all. So, let me go ahead. Um, we got to talk about this situation here. Let's, let's start with Charlemagne, the God. We're going to start with Charlemagne. Let me see here. Oh, everybody's speaking on... Uh, Diddy. Excuse me. Okay, so we're gonna watch the Charlemagne the God clip here. So give me just a second. I'm gonna close these blinds too. The sun is now. The sun want to come out. Oh, hold on. Ah, right, let me add this to the stage. Okay, there we go. Okay. Like it really saddens me, and the reason it saddens me is because, like, at, it, it, you you got to be honest with yourself when it comes to these situations. We're talking about a person who contributed so much to culture. You know what I'm saying? You're talking about a person who helped provide soundtracks to our lives. You're talking mm. about a person, you know, especially you being from New York City, you know. You had to be inspired by Sean Combs in some way, shape, or form. Like, you know, like, we grew up watching, like, Making the Band. He was, like, one of the first moguls that so many of us saw. So when I see shit like this, the shit is sad. Because it's just like, yo, why do people always got to crash and burn? Like, always. 
Mm-hmm. Like, 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 I don't like seeing another legacy go up in smoke. Now, listen, you, you do the crime, you know, you got to be held accountable. Like, that's just the reality what of the situation. What is crime? What I is don't crime? know. Now, we, that's what I keep trying to figure but out. I almost don't want to know exactly what it is, because then I can get these jokes off and feel no guilt. <laughs> Once we find out there's, like, little kids on an island, then I'm going to be but, like, but see, ah, no, but see, that's the thing. Talk to me. People throw around words like sex trafficking and everything. Pull up the definition of sex trafficking. Pull up the definition of sex trafficking. You fly a hooker from city to city. Exactly. So they could be just well-paid hookers, exactly. but it's illegal to be a hooker. That's my point. But sex trafficking in our minds is like they Larry just Epstein. fucking... Larry Epstein. T- Larry. What's his name? What the fuck is his name? <laughs> Juan? No, not Juan. What the fuck was his name? Stop it now. What was his name? Stop it now. What was his name? Stop it now. What the fuck was his name? I really Jeff, can't remember. Jeff, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Epstein. Epstein. Larry yes. Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> what the, what, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. What, First of all, he knows damn well he knows what that man's name is. Talking about some damn Juan Epstein. Like, stop. Again, I feel like this. That damn Revolt TV check. <laughs> he's speaking because he, you know, he's he's paid from Revolt. Breakfast Club is part of Revolt Television, um, and they have to have their bosses back. Um, Again, has Diddy made some of the most iconic songs of my childhood? Absolutely. And so has R. Kelly. And I've said this time and time again while other influencers are being fake. And I I would never, ever listen to R. Kelly again. Not me, bitch. If Step in the Name of Love comes on, guess what? I'm stepping in the name of love. If feeling on your booty comes on, guess what? I'm feeling on your booty, okay? Like, I, that doesn't negate anything to me. Just because they made soundtracks and, and, you know, music to the soundtracks of our life, that doesn't negate anything. That doesn't make them necessarily good people. They just made good music. Nothing more, nothing less. But it's very interesting how, you know, because he made decent music, somehow that just negates all of the wrong that he's done to people. And, and let's keep it real. Can we have an honest conversation? Diddy didn't even make the music. Okay, first and foremost, all he did was take other people's work, other people's talent and call it a day. Okay, so let's go ahead and listen to the next thing here. This is Mano. That's... Hold up, let me do this full screen here. I don't know why my lights are bugging today. That is so weird. Okay. Pause. Do you think it's like a, a agenda to destroy popular? This is what I'm saying. And if you know anything about, you know, 60s, and I hate to get all like this, but if you know anything about the 60s and what they did with black leadership and all that, these were some of the tactics, right, to destroy you. Basically, they, they divide and conquer, like J. right? J. J. Edgar Hoover. There you go, yep. right? So, Coin Cell Pro, what they would do was they, they, they would put out misinformation, have us looking at each other right they sending out letters and sending out things saying you know, this one talking about that one this one got caught doing this right mm-hmm. and it keeps us disorganized right and and also propaganda which is fed fueled through the media is a tool that's always been used media controls this the is what i'm saying so i'm not quick to jump at what everybody else is running running towards, like because if you ask the average person, it's like what what you think he did? Like I, I don't know, he did something. I I don't, I don't know. Like he you know what I mean? He, he, he sex trafficking. Oh, all right. What's sex? Like I, they got to give me a clear definition of what sex trafficking is. So you saying he was what? He was making people sell their body? Like I don't I'm saying is it under eight? Like it's not clear to me. Making these accusations, you got some dude named Lil Rod. First of all. That's oh, that producer be a f- pause on his name, like <laughs> nigga named Little Rod. Like, <laughs> yeah. that's pause. Do you think it's like a, a agenda to destroy populism? This is what I'm like, saying. And if you know anything about, all right, let me come back on the screen here. So, I feel like first of all, why is he acting like Diddy is Malcolm X? Oh, it's Quarantel Pro, and you know they're just trying to take down the black man, and you know the guy's name is Little Rod. I don't think like any of that matters. He's not anybody like he's he's not a leader. Like I don't understand like why people keep trying to make these musicians like leaders of the black community, and you know this is just a a plot to take down the black man. No, this is a man who is who 
uh, who's allegedly being accused of a lot of stuff, right? But even outside of the things that's in that lawsuit, Diddy is just a trash person. He's done so many things to people throughout the years. You know, like Charlamagne was saying earlier, oh, you know, he brought us making of the band. If you actually go back and watch Making of the Band, none of those kids ever became successful. None of them made any money. None of them got any type of residuals. They were basically used. Their talents were taken and they were chewed up and spit out. The only person who made money from Making the Band was Diddy and his family. You can go back and listen to all of the things that Mace was saying about Diddy back in 2020, you know what I'm saying? And Mace was talking about how Diddy's publishing is in Justin's name. Diddy's publishing is in, in his mother's name. So if this person was such a good person, why did he have to do like all this sneak shit? Why did he have to use little um, Black Rob, excuse me, Black Rob's talents and g Depp's talents and Biggie's talents and not pay them or their families their fair share? So I, I just, I hate the fact that they're trying to act like, you know, this is like this big plot to destroy this black man who has done nothing but, but good for the black community. Like outside of making good music that we, you know, that's a vibe when we go to a party and, you know, lying to everybody for years and acting like he was the owner and distributor of Ciroc, which we found out years later that he was nothing but a glorified influencer what all has he done that has really benefited the black community besides push alcoholism, push sex, violence, and everything else, and make sure his family was good, but fuck everybody else's family. So I just, I just don't understand that. Yeah, 112, I mean, y'all have seen all the musicians that I've broke down in three volumes that he has done wrong. And this is outside of this whole lawsuit. Imagine if he would have just been fair to people. Imagine if he would have just paid people their worth and just did the right thing. And let's not also forget that the only reason why this lawsuit is able to have legs is because of Cassie. Because she was brave enough to finally speak out and tell everybody, you know, the stuff that she's been through. So I, don't, I just find it very interesting. And I think with him... He's definitely not the right messenger. Ain't this the same man that goes around slapping people? Um, there's been all types of things about him allegedly putting hands on little Kim. So I, I just, there's nothing he can say that can have me even thinking that this man is being um, attached to Quarantel Pro. Like that's silly. In the words of Malcolm X, since he wants to bring up Malcolm X, didn't Malcolm X tell y'all? That in no other community do they put entertainers and comedians and, you know, singers as the voice of their community. It's only in the black community. You'll, ne you'll never see when it comes to like Asian politics where th there's no reason for Glorilla to be invited to the White House. She's a rapper. You don't see them doing that with other races. If they want to have a meeting with people of other races, they are meeting with those people's dignitaries. They are meeting with those people's politicians. But when it comes to like the black community in America, they're meeting with Fat Joe and Glorilla. Why? Because they take the black community as a joke. And so when you're trying to put Diddy on the same pedestal as a Malcolm X, I find that very insulting. Especially if you actually listen to the words of Malcolm X, he said to not put entertainers in the positions of leaders, especially when it comes to politics, they should not be our voices. Entertainers are just simply there to entertain. Nothing more, nothing less. So no, I think that's very, very insulting. Even I remember seeing Glorilla on CNN not too long ago, and they were interviewing her about, you know, like what she thought about the White House visit with Joe Biden. And she just said a bunch of word salad. And, you know, people were mad, like, oh, this is so embarrassing. Why would they even be interviewing Glorilla? And yes, it is low-key embarrassing, but you got to ask yourself, why was she even chosen to go to the White House? It's like a slap in the face. It's like they feel like black folks are not smart enough to understand politics and how the world works around them unless it's tied to a celebrity face. And that's the sad part.
So yeah, nobody. This ain't no. It, it that the conspiracy is not that deep. They're trying to make it deeper than what it is, and it's really not. He needs to have several seats. Okay, so now our fave is speaking. So we're gonna listen to him and what he has to say. Our Kelly's in his feelings about the situation as well. So he's speaking out. Let me share this tab. Okay, so we're going to listen to what R. Kelly has to say about Diddy Child. They done drug him out of prison to get on the phone. And what's crazy is, well, you know, I know, you know, because we have been in this family, is, is, is March Day, and I hope they don't, but if they, they're paying them, that's when all nigga, nigga, motherfuckers going to be lining up with their hand in there. Some saying, some saying, see the pepper part, part about it, this is what I don't understand. About this, it's all this shit. shit. Motherfucker, if there was a time, right, where this was a play, this was your party, this was your. Nigga, like, if you um a participant, right, when you're a legal age, I don't understand what all the hoopla all of a sudden is against the wheel. It's against the wheel. Man, what's the you just came back to 300 parties? Okay, hold on. Everybody saying there's an echo? Okay. It wasn't echoing before. It's that jailhouse recording. Hold on. Let me um let me play it over. I'm gonna mute my microphone and play it over. And then let me know if y'all can hear it since it was echoing. Give me just a second to I'm gonna refresh the page real quick. And what's crazy is what you know, I know, you know, because we just been in this energy forever, is is March Day, and I hope they don't, but if they detain him that's when all nigga niggas motherfuckers gonna be lining up with their hand in there so i'm saying man, see the pat part about him this is what i don't understand about this all this shit motherfucker if there was a time right where this was a play this was y'all party this was y'all nigga like if you was um a participant right when you of legal age I don't understand what all the hoopla all of a sudden is against the wheel. It's against the wheel. Man, what's so you just came back to 300 parties, motherfucker, against the wheel. <clears throat> all this shit, you got to damn it, get them, turn on your camera, let a motherfucker tell you who they is, put their ID up, let a motherfucker tell you where they at, because any given Sunday, right, when a motherfucker want to go bad, they can extort you or cover with the accusations. Shit, man, that shit is crazy, man. It's crazy. That's what I say, motherfuckers, motherfuckers gonna be out there laughing and, make, and making comedian jokes and doing all that other shit on the radio and everything else, but they ask to be next. You know what yeah. Man? That's what's so yeah, fucked up about it. They're so stupid. They're so stupid, they don't even realize the move that's going on. I mean, it's crazy, yeah, man. I mean, that's why I don't believe none of the shit. I mean, no, you I told them straight up, bro. You can tell me about anybody in now. You can tell me the, on the news the weather is, is the sky is blue. I'm not gonna believe the shit, no. Because I'm Listen. in it now. I know what they did. <laughs> Yeah, like, listen, I told, at, when it first started with Cassie, I said, yo, nigga, this is a stick-up move. Oh, if I was that nigga, I'd have just came out and said, hey, listen, these are my sexual preferences. Yes, I'm bi or whatever the fuck, and these right. motherfuckers been trying to extort me, and I'm tired of it. They know that I'm in the music industry, and boom, boom, boom. Nigga, they would have ate her up, and, and still, but, but now they using that, they using that against him, that, but now it's getting to a point to where, you know, it's getting to a point to where it's like, nigga, you you you, you gonna have to say something. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But he, 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 he ain't fleeced though. As long as, you know. Nah, he ain't. <laughs> nah, nah, he ain't. They, they didn't raid it. You know, they ran up in his cribs, but you know, yeah, I saw that. Crib, get, this how you know it's weak. You know, usually when they run up in the nigga house, they coming to get you too. Yeah. They look at, they still searching and looking like that nigga ain't on the run or that they ain't telling him to come turn himself in or no shit like that. They grounded his plane because they seen him moving. He wasn't even on the plane. They wanted to make sure he wasn't because they, they probably didn't restrict his passport and shit as of yet, as of now. You know, but yeah, this shit is crazy. Yeah, but that's how it all started though, right? You understand? Started no, I know. 
no, I know. Get you for all that because they don't. You know, it's it's crazy, man. I know, but see, it's they know crazy, fucking bro. with him. He got some money, so they know they got to come right. They know if they come half stepping, he do got the money to to to, to fight. So they ain't finna. They ain't gonna. Well, I do know this: if they do put him in cuffs. They only put him on cu- in cuffs because they got a definite. They got some at that point. So, yeah, that ain't that ain't necessary. That ain't even necessarily true, right there. Well, they, well, they, they feel like they got this enough. Call is from they, the they got prison. enough. They want they, you. If they want a plan to get you, or if it's a conspiracy, yeah. anything, they can put you in cuffs, bro. <laughs> no, that's real. And I've been telling people. I've been preaching. I said, yo, one thing already taught me what I didn't know. Is we going off this state shit, nigga? The law of the land when it comes to the feds is eighteen across the board. You niggas in Jersey with the sixteen, Nevada and Atlanta, that's the state. But if the feds want to come in and pick it up, ain't yep. nothing the state could do to help you or save you. You can't say what well, the state. Yup, the law of the land federally is eighteen. I said I didn't even know that until. You know, I thought, you know, whatever the state said, that's what it was. Shit. All right. I just, I I can't. Shut up. I just don't care anymore. Next. Between, between Wack and Mushmouth R. Kelly, just get the fuck out of here. First of all, don't nobody want R. Kelly defending them. So I don't think this is a good look. I think R. Kelly needs to, you know, do his time and mind his business um, before some more dirt come out about him. And we all know they had that song together, you know, Satisfy You. That was my jam back in the day. He don't understand you like I do. I guess he's having flashbacks. And he'll never make love to you like I do. So give it to me. Yeah, he's missing Diddy right now, okay? My thing is this. At the end of the day, you know, he's saying, well, how's the sex trafficking? These folks is grown. Like I said, there's always you know, two types of victims, right? You have, like in the R. Kelly situation, like I've said from day one, you have the real victims, the girls who were actually, like the braider, you know, who accused R. Kelly of r her. She was there to do a job and she was assaulted. Then you have, you know, the attention whores like Faith Rogers who knew that R. Kelly wasn't shit, you know, but she still ran behind him, got her titties done and, and you know, contracted herpes, trying to be messy. So, of course, you have those two, but everybody's not lying. You know, it's just unfortunate with his situation. You have some attention whores in there, but then you have some real victims mixed in. And that could be the same situation with Diddy. But at the end of the day, something is going on. You know, I just don't see, because people get sued all the time, right? People get accused of stuff all the time. But if there was no merit to it, I don't see it going this far. I don't see it going all the way up the chain of command where he's getting raided, where judges are signing off, if there's not something there, you know? And he's saying like, oh, you know, people need to stop being comedians and laughing and this, this, and that. That is what the internet does. Does he not forget, you know, that whole, uh, when he had the interview with Gail King and was like, they're trying to kill me right now. This is killing me. People meme that to death. That's just what the internet does. The internet is going to internet, okay? Um, so I, I don't understand like why the sudden it's like hands off because it's Diddy. That the internet clowns everybody. Diddy's not beyond reproach. Hell, these were some of the best memes I saw on the internet as of late. Let me show y'all this. I, I don't know. These made me laugh. Shit. Hold up. Okay, here it is. So they had this, <laughs> they called it the Shawshank Redemption, um, directed by Dan Schneider, soundtrack by R. Kelly. They had him and uh, Jeffrey Epstein on this. Then they also had this meme, <clears throat> where they kind of crossed them with Bill Cosby. And then this was crazy. there i'm like the internet is insane they had jay-z in there they had jeffrey epstein so i mean again diddy's not beyond reproach 
The internet is going to internet. The internet is undefeated. They're going to roll out the memes. They're going to crank out the gifts. So I don't give a damn. I cackled when I seen that shit. I'm like, that is insane. I don't know who made that, but I couldn't play the whole video. Y'all had to go on my page and watch it, but that had me dying laughing. You know, again, all we can do is sit around and wait and see what happens. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think R. Kelly's in a position to even be even speaking on the situation, I think he needs to just sit down and go do his time. Point blank, period. Let, let Diddy hold his own nuts. Because I don't recall Diddy coming out and backing you. I don't recall Diddy coming out and saying, you know, let's all keep R. Kelly in prayer. Y'all know me and him had that successful song together back in the day. Nobody came out on R. Kelly's behalf. Because, again, they didn't want their own skeletons coming out the closet. So they all sat back and, you know, watched R. Kelly go down for what he went down for. So R. Kelly needs to, you know, have a tall glass to shut the fuck up and just go do his time. I don't understand, like, why him and Suge Knight have podcasts. I just, I don't get it. Um, I mean, it has to be, you know, it has to be crazy if you're, like, a victim of these people. And they're just, you know, talking like they're out. Just, oh, yeah, I seen the raid. Yeah, I saw the video. How? How, Sway? How do you know more information in there than people out here? So I know the victims got to, the real victims have to feel the way that he's even here doing commentary on shit. It's, it's insane. So yeah, this whole situation's a mess. So now let me see here. What else? I think we got, I don't know though. As someone who grew Ooh, Okay. I just want to make sure we get all, we got all the Diddy stuff. Okay, good. Yeah, we got all that out the way. So now I want to speak on this whole Dr. Umar and Nick Cannon situation. So if you guys do not know, um, Dr. Umar went to talk to Nick Cannon about, I guess, his one black daughter and her, you know, potentially facing colorism as she gets older. And so they're talking about this here. So we're going to go ahead and watch this video. This went viral on social media. I'm going to mute this so hopefully it doesn't echo. So give me just a second. Up in a home with a dark sister who was right. darker than me, beautiful, but my older sister was darker. Right. I saw Onyx grows up with her siblings. Right. You're going to have to have a conversation along yes. with their mothers yes about colorism 100 percent. as someone who grew up in a home with a dark sister who was right. darker than me beautiful but my older sister was darker right i saw how she suffered mm. some of the pangs of colorism within my extended family 100 percent. so when onyx gets to the age where she begins to recognize race mm -hmm. and brother nick cannon has to have that conversation uh, with her mother and the mothers of your other children and your children, your family. Right. You're going to have to have this conversation. And when you start explaining to Onyx that your blackness is in no way a sin or a curse, it's a blessing it's a and blessing. a power. Absolutely. Right? When she reflects back to you. Her name is Onyx for a reason. Absolutely. <laughs> right. It's black power, actually. Yeah. But when she reflects back to you as her father and say, well, dad, if this color is all that great, how did you end up to reproduce so many children with women who are not? When Princess Onyx grows up with her siblings. Right. You're going to have to have a conversation. Okay, let me come back on the screen here. So, uh, you guys just heard what Umar Johnson had to say about Nick Cannon's one dark-skinned daughter. And, you know, I saw a lot of people, like, you know, agreeing with Umar. I don't think he said anything wrong. But... Can we have a real conversation here? First of all, Nick Cannon wasn't listening. He wasn't interested in this conversation. Let's just keep it real. All that, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you can tell when somebody's really listening with their ears, digesting the information, and really taking it to heart with their hearing. Nick Cannon was doing none of that, okay? He was nodding his head and saying, yeah, but he wasn't listening. My thing is this, I don't, the, the, the thing with Nick Cannon is people keep pussyfooting around the real issue. Colorism is not the real issue here. Can we have a real conversation? I see a lot of dark skinned women cheering this shit on and it's silly. Colorism is not the root of this issue, right? I don't give a damn if he had 15 kids that were all the same color of a lek wek. He could have 15 dark skinned kids. Who gives a shit if his kids are light, dark, mixed? 
the issue at hand that everybody wants to walk around the elephant in the room is that this weirdo, okay, won't stop knocking up women and creating broken homes. Can we have that conversation? Like, again, I don't think Umar said anything wrong, but if Umar really wants to have a real conversation with Nick, he needs to talk about these broken homes that Nick Cannon is creating, okay? Obviously, these women, they don't get along. When even like his, his uh, Easter pictures came out, they were on the shade room, and he was dressed as a bunny, which is very ironic because he fucks like a rabbit. So he's dressed like a bunny rabbit, and he's taking pictures at all these different homes with these children. And the one kids, I think it was the, the kids he has with Abby, De La Rosa, I don't know. But none of the kids looked happy. They, like I said, and even the older ones, they didn't even bother to get dressed, child. Mariah Carey's kids still had on sweat outfits. They're like, he's just here for a photo op. They, they just didn't look interested. One of the girls, one of the light-skinned baby mamas, I think was Abby. If you look, all the kids had sour faces. The one baby was crying. None of them looked like they even, like, fooled with him like that. There was like no energy, no, you know, arms around dad. It, it just, it's just, it wasn't giving me anything, okay? And I believe the reason why Umar Johnson doesn't want to have the real conversation with Nick Cannon, why it's easier for him to talk about colorism, you know, to pacify, you know, dark-skinned women, um, is because Umar's in the same boat, okay? It's easier for him to go the colorism route because Umar Johnson himself, has I know he has a minimum of two kids with two baby mamas. He's created two broken households. He didn't marry either one of his baby mamas. Now, somebody said he has a third child. I don't know. I haven't verified that. He may have a third child. Y'all can let me know. But I know for a fact he has two daughters by two different women, and he married neither one of the he married neither one of the mothers. So that so y'all gotta understand. Y'all get hyped about the minuscule stuff. I don't care about this colorism conversation. We've talked about, we can talk about colorism till we're blue in the face. It doesn't matter if he has a whole bunch of light-skinned kids, dark-skinned kids. The, the, the biggest issue in the situation is that he has a bunch of kids by a bunch of different women and in a bunch of different households. And these kids are not even grown up as siblings. And he's doing these weird photo ops. And that's really, that means nothing. And then you have idiots in the comment section of the shade room saying, oh, he's such a good dad. You got some dads who don't even go see their kids for Easter. So we're praising people for doing what they're supposed to do. So we're supposed to like praise him because he decided to go see all of his kids for Easter. That's the least he should do. Why do we praise mediocrity? Imagine as a mother getting praised because you woke up and made breakfast. Oh, what a great mom. She cooked breakfast for her kids. Bitch, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to feed your children. He should be there on Easter. He should see his children. That doesn't make him a good father because he chose to go see all of his kids on Easter. That's not parenting. A good father would want all his kids in one household. So he's there for them from the time they get up. Gets them ready, gets them prepared for school or daycare, just whatever. That is a good father. A good father is in the house home. He's not playing Rolling Stone. So I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. So I just felt like, you know, a lot of people were like running with this conversation. Like, you know, like Umar was the best thing since sliced bread. And I get what Umar's saying. But for me, I'm not impressed by this at all. The conversation should be deeper. The conversation should be another man holding another man accountable for why he is continuing to create broken homes. But again, Umar's the wrong messenger for that. So he has to go the colorism route to appease dark-skinned black women as opposed to the real conversation. But he can't have that real conversation because he, he, he too has created broken homes and hasn't married anybody but yet wants to preach to young black men about marriage and, you know, having children with black women. I mean, both his baby mama, mamas, from what I've seen, are black. But again, I don't know if there is a third. I've just heard that there's a third, you know. So I just find that interesting. Yes, he was definitely pandering to black women, particularly dark-skinned black women. And I just see through the bullshit. I'm not impressed at all. And Nick Cannon obviously didn't care. You know, for him, it was just another episode on his podcast. So I, I don't know. I just think he's trash. The whole conversation was just very superficial. Just like with, um, what's her name? Uh, Ayana Van Zant. you know, her, you know, 
catering to him and pampering him and oh you know the black community doesn't appreciate what you do for the black community no we, we the black community wants to know why you keep knocking people up and creating broken homes and then in the same breath you want to talk to us on some woke shit i don't want to hear any mush mouth woke shit when your life is not in order it's just that simple live your life you know what i'm saying have your macho baby mamas but stop preaching to us about what we need to do because it's, it's an oxymoron at this point so I, so for me, I wasn't impressed. I wasn't impressed at all by Mr. Umar Donations Johnson. So now, last but not least, I wanted to hit on this situation with Lizzo. <laughs> so Lizzo, again, um, a few of her, you know, her fans were in my comment section mad. Not that I give a shit. So Lizzo announced the other day that she was quitting music. And y'all know I have no sympathy for Lizzo. Lizzo is nothing more than attention whore. And I always see through her, you know, her victimhood and, and her nonsense. So let's go back to a few days ago here. Thank hold on, where is it at? Okay. Let me share my screen here. So nobody, nobody at all. We're all minding our business. And Lizzo decided to let us know that she was quitting music. And so she said this, Lizzo announced Friday that she is quitting the music industry. I'm getting tired of putting up with being dragged by everyone in my life on the internet. She posted to her Instagram. All I want is to make music and make people happy and help the world be a little bit better, better than how I found it. Then they're going to say, She said, okay, then they go on to say, the Truth Hurt singer went on to criticize the lies she said that are being told about her. But I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. I'm constantly up against lies being told about me for clout and views. Lizzo is currently embroiled in a sexual harassment lawsuit filed by three other former dancers. The lawsuit alleged that Lizzo created a hostile work environment and sexually harassed employees. On her March 29th statement, the singer went on to say she is tired of being the butt of the joke every single time because of how I look. My character is being picked apart by people who don't know me and disrespecting my name. I didn't sign up for this and she concluded, I quit. Okay, so she took the social media and she announced that she quit. So this was my response. You can't see it because it doesn't show a gift on the computer. But let me show you. This is what I posted. That's why it has over 400 likes and people were just cracking up. So I posted this. I don't care, LOL, bye. So that was my response to this news about Lizzo quitting the industry. And so, you know, a few of her fans were like, oh, you're a mean girl, fuck you T, how dare you talk about Lizzo? And, huh, you know, she's going through a lot. But again, I'm smart enough to see through Lizzo's bullshit, okay? So, that's why I posted that, because Lizzo loves doing things for attention. She loves to play victim. She's always, she, how many times has she quitted the internet? Okay, how many times has she quitted social media only to come back? Well, about 30 minutes ago, somebody had just sent me this video. She's back. And we're going to listen to what she has to say. Now, remember, she said that she quit. Now she's back. So we're going to watch this together. This is on the shade room. I want to make this video because I just need to clarify. When I say I quit, get your ass tiny violin. I mean, I quit giving any negative energy attention. What I'm not going to quit is the joy of my life, which is making music, which is connecting to people. Because I know I'm not alone. In no way, shape, or form am I the only person who is experiencing that negative voice that seems to be louder than the positive. If I can just give one person the inspiration or motivation to stand up for themselves and say they quit letting negative people win, negative comments win, then I've done even more than I could have hoped for. With that being said, I'm going to keep moving forward. I want to. Let me unmute my.
myself and come back on the screen. Okay. First and foremost, Lizzo, let me explain something to you. Okay. And this is why I don't care when she posts this. Cause like I said, every other year she, you know, she's quitting music and all this stuff. There's a big difference between saying that you quit music. Cause that's what she said initially. I quit music. I'm tired of the bullying and people making fun of me. Then now you're trying to backtrack and say that, you know, um, you're, you're quitting, um, giving people, <laughs> you know, people's negative energy attention. Those are two different things. Cause she could have easily wrote, I quit giving negativity any attention, but she wrote, I quit. So again, it's always theatrics with her. And this is why a lot of people just are over Lizzo. It's always theatrics. She makes good music, beautiful woman, beautiful voice, but she's annoying as hell. And she's annoyed me for the past two years and, and I refuse to give her any more attention. Anytime I see something about her crying about, you know, oh, quitting and bullying and all this and that, I just yawn and keep scrolling. LOL, I don't care, like the dolphin said. <laughs> I just don't care. I know she'd be back. So to her two fans who are attacking me, she's back. So how am I, how am I mean because I'm not feeding into her bullshit? Because I knew she'd be back. I'm like, give it a few days, she'll be back trying to play crazy, trying to act like the internet, you know, we read too deep into something that she wrote. No, everybody was minding their business. She got up out of nowhere and said that she quit music. And now she's bad talking about, well, that's not what I meant. I, what, what I said was I, I quit giving negativity energy. That's not what you wrote, ma'am. You said that you quit music. And of course that went viral, was on all the publications. <laughs> yeah, it was her two, it was just two. It was just two Lizzo fans that were, that were in their feelings, child. Everybody else saw the post and laughed. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I, don't, I don't have any words. So I just, you know, I just put the little gift up and kept on scrolling. That was my response. But yeah, there was just two of her fans, you know. So I had to, you know, make my little response back to them and keep it pushing. But yeah, I don't, she, she's a weirdo. She needs to focus on her music in this lawsuit, Okay. And again, it's very funny that for years, this woman has talked about bullying and people making fun of her because she's big and all this other stuff. But per the lawsuit, she would make fun of the other big girls. She would tell the other girls to lose weight. I said the audacity. Her name is literally Lizzo B. Eating. And I remember I didn't know that for a long time. I thought it was Lizzo Beating. And then y'all told me, no, it's Lizzo B. Eating. So your handle is Lizzo B. Eating and you got the nerve to be making fun of other people who are big. And telling them that they need to get into shape and slim down. Again, she's always crying about bullying. But per the lawsuit, they said that she bullies her dancers. Even made them eat bananas out of these people's coochies in Amsterdam. To get their potassium. So the only bully here per the lawsuit is you. So again, yeah, y'all missed that. There's some freaky spot in Amsterdam that they put bananas in their coochies and you're supposed to eat it out. And the dancer was like, you know, I'm a Christian. I don't want to put my face near somebody's crotch and eat a banana out of it. And Lizzo pressured them to get their potassium. And I found the audio. See, I did a whole video breakdown. Y'all got to look for the video I did on Lizzo when the accusations came out. So, you know, she's a big old freak and that's fine. If you want to be a big old freak and eat, you know, bananas out of people's coochies, that's her business. She can do what she want to do. She's grown. But it's not okay for you to try and force your dancers to partake in your, you know, potassium behaviors. So I, I just think she's looking for sympathy because this lawsuit is nearing. Um, she tried to get the cases dismissed and the judge said, no, we're moving forward. So they weren't dismissing these lawsuits. So I think she's trying to like, you know, look for sympathy and it didn't work. So now she's back. So good luck to Lizzo, but I'm glad I didn't fall for it. So in the voice of that dolphin, LOL, bye. <laughs> Let me read these last few super chats. I'm gonna go ahead and get up out of here, y'all. Um, I appreciate it. Y'all are in here deep today. Uh, let me see. Uh, to Shani Love says, hey, T, Discord gang, my house was raided when I was about nine years old. I'm now 33. I can't stand the pigs. Love you, T. Thank you so much, sis. I'm sorry that your house was raided. Um, like I said, I know a lot of kids who went through raids, you know, growing up because their parents, you know, 
had to do what they had to do. And I know a lot of people still go through a lot of PTSD. And I'm sure you can confirm that your raid that you went through is probably 10 times worse than what the Combses went through. I'm just saying, because I've watched a few raids and, you know, between the cops in the neighborhood, you know, helping themselves, it can be a pretty uh, shitty situation. Uh, let's see here. Jade sent five says, hey, T, I've been watching you since 2016. Keep being you and putting out the real content. Birmingham, Alabama. Thank you so much. Alabama's in the building. I want to go down there. Uh, ever since that riverboat brawl, I never had any intentions of going down there. But I feel like I need to like, I think the Montgomery boat, boat brawl is now like our little, you know, bootleg Mecca. I want to go down there. You know what I'm saying? I want to get on the riverboat and see where them white folks got their ass whooped. <laughs> Let me stop being messy, child. But I do want to go down there now. I'm like, okay, Alabama's about that life, bitch. Let me go ahead and check y'all out. I'm always in Atlanta. I think I need to come down to Alabama. I want to go down to that riverboat, bro. <laughs> that, that fight lives in my head rent free. When that kid jumped out that boat and swam like he was Aquaman and got the doop, doop, doop. I'm like, I need to go down there, okay? I need to pay them a visit, okay? So, yeah, Alabama been in the news lately. Boy, oh boy. Yeah. All right, it's beautiful down there. I got to definitely check it out. So, thank you for the super chat, sis. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Say Carrie Sim 5 says, just want to show you some love, T. I hope you have an event in Charlotte because I would definitely attend. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I definitely miss Charlotte a lot. Definitely have to get back down there. That is like my third home right there. So thank you. Uh, Logan Leslie, Leslie Logan sent a $5 sticker. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Didi Watson sent 999 says, also a broke college student, but I had to send some love your way. Looking good too. Discord gang. Thank you so much, sis. I appreciate you. Thanks for coming through today. Um, let's see here. I think I got everybody. Whoa, hold on, there's some more. Big Booty Jersey sent $10. Says, hey, T, looking beautiful. Funny how you were just talking about celebrities erasing things off the internet. J-Lo is being dragged for her documentary on TikTok. LOL, she's been copywriting people. Oh, wow. I didn't even hear about that yet. I'm going to have to look into that. So J-Lo trying to rewrite history, huh? So in her documentary, did she admit to like, you know, basically stealing Ashanti's vocals and that we can still hear Ashanti in the background of her tracks? Did she even speak on Ashanti? Because Ashanti literally carried her damn near through her whole career, child. <laughs> I said, boy, they got J-Lo playing the Super Bowl. Meanwhile, half the song she was performing came off of Ashanti's back. Very interesting. Uh, let's see here. Sincerely, uh, Nadia sent four ninety nine. Says I peeped my neighbor through the side window. He had five guys pointed guns at her in her underwear after breaking her glass door while her son was watching. Oh yeah, them raids don't be no joke at all. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate you. Not everybody having memories of raids in their neighborhood. <laughs> Damn, we're, look where, where did we all grow up? Shit. <laughs> Man, we done seen some things growing up. Um, let's see here. A Marley sent 499 says, I find it funny how all these celebrities are quiet as fuck when Cassie came out, though. Facts. That is so true. It's very interesting now how all these guys want to act like Diddy is the Malcolm X of the, you know, the hip hop industry. But when Cassie came out, they were all quiet. None of them had anything to say. And like I said, Cassie was honestly the perfect victim. I think if it would have been Carisha, it would, it would, nobody would have paid it any mind just because of how Carisha carries herself, you know, her, you know, being a self-proclaimed whore and stuff like that. But because Cassie has been on, has been very unproblematic for like the past 20 years, you've never heard her embroiled in anything. You've never seen her get into it with anybody on social media. She's never caught anybody broke or a hater. So Cassie was honestly the perfect victim and none of these men. None of these men spoke out on Cassie's behalf. So, yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, King Devante says, that video isn't Diddy and Meek Mill. I saw the actual video. That's why I didn't post it. Like I said, I had no proof one way or another. 
All I know is that that audio was very disturbing, but again, unless it's like, you know, definitive, we weren't gonna post it, but I did hear it though. Um, let's see here. Sincerely, oh, hold on, write that. Aaron says, hey auntie, thank you for the deep dives and everything else. Been enjoying the Discord almost a year of being a member. That is awesome. I'm so glad you've been enjoying it. And hopefully, you know, once we do our next event, you'll be able to attend and get to meet everybody face to face. So thank you for being a member of the Discord. I appreciate it. Um, LMW Senpai says you should replace, I'm gonna leave Will with, take that, take that. <laughs> the way you said it had me rolling. <laughs> thank you so much, sis. I appreciate you. Uh, Darius Kinder says, shout out to you and the tea sipper sending love from Macklin, Georgia. We're ready for the party in the A. You're the best queen. Thank you so much. I'm telling you, once we hit a million subscribers, it's going to be on and popping. I can't wait to like start planning everything. So thank you. Um, Baby G sent 999 says, all this male sodomy and essay is starting to disturb me. It's one thing to engage willingly, but all of this full out assault of men on a large scale. It's too much to digest, yeah. I think any type of sexual assault and, you know, eye wording is disturbing, you know, regardless of the gender. You know, so many times when men are abused, it's very much dismissed and it's not okay. You know, I don't care if it's a male victim or a female victim. You know, we see the situation that's going on with Nickelodeon, with Quiet on the Set, and how like a lot of, you know, like Drake Bell and, you know, other male victims that we've talked about on this channel over the years, even that documentary, An Open Secret. So you have a lot of male victims um, definitely in the industry, you know, which is really, really disturbing. Uh, let's see here. Tina Guzman sent 10, says, I love how you're matching your background. You're my bestie in my head. Thank you so much, Tina. I appreciate you, sis. Thanks for coming through. Um, let's see here. Jachai Williams sent a dollar. Thank you so much, Jachai. I appreciate you. Uh, Krista Monique sent 499 says, love the red tea. Unfortunately, there are a lot of male artists making comments defending Diddy on the sly, um, either on their socials or on their lives. Yeah. And I think a lot of that is because they've done their dirt too. You know, the, the industry is just full of mess. And I think a lot of that is, you know, they want to herp and say something in case some stuff comes out about them. But again, like Cat Williams says, you know, it's over for a lot of these big dick deviants. So I feel no ways, including the females too, like Carisha. I think if, um, if it comes out that she's guilty and is heavily involved, she should go to jail, you know, just like Ghislaine Maxwell. So yeah, this is not just about the men. Anybody who's involved, who was involved in taking advantage of people and, you know, sex trafficking and harming people. You do the crime, do the time. So I don't feel bad for none of them. Let's see here. But it's very funny though, Carisha's disposition now. You know, now the sudden, oh, she wasn't getting an allowance and they said she's on social media selling her handbags. And you know, now the sudden she don't wanna act bad. You know, now the sudden, the so, you know, social media is um, putting words in her mouth and, they're over exaggerating stuff, but this is all things that she bragged about. You know, we have receipts. This is all the stuff that she bragged about, the things that she said. It's funny now that shit is getting real. She doesn't want to act bad. Very interesting. You know, now she don't want to act bad. Now she wants to act, you know, nice and you know, meek and mild instead of acting bad. So I don't I don't feel no ways about her. I think she's trash. She's been trash. Her attitude is trash. The way she did her best friend and you know, uh JT. You know, for Diddy, she just has a trash personality. I don't feel bad for her. Um, she'll be back calling y'all broke in a month. You know, once this kind of dies down, she'll be back calling y'all broke. I, uh -uh, I pay her no mind. And then the fact like the shit that she was just pushing was just trash. You know, like just bragging about being a whore, you know, trying to make it look like it's cool to get peed on. Like just, and again, I'm grown. So the stuff that she says has no bearing on me because I'm grown. I think she's trash. But for the young girls who don't understand like the shit that the seeds that she's planting, they think it's cool. So now they think it's cool and it's respectful for a guy to pee on them. 
because she's bragging about golden showers from this demonic demon, Diddy. So I, I think that's the part that's just really disturbing. So I feel no ways. If, she, if they find her guilty, she should go to jail too. And she should, you know, go to jail and act bad. Yeah, and she's a mom. I wonder if she'd be okay, you know what I'm saying, with somebody, you know, abusing her child. And that's what a lot of these people don't think about. Like, they want everybody to feel sorry, sorry for their kids and what their kids are going through. But yet and still, they have no problem disrespecting other people's children, pimping out other people's children, sex trafficking other people's children. Meanwhile, they themselves have daughters. They themselves have sons. So it's, it's sad. It's really sad. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Kareed uh, Sweets sent 9.99 says, "Hey T, I started side eyeing Puff when he was making the band and Danity Kane. His relationship with Aubrey was weird, and when Janet Jackson said she wasn't going to his house when he invited her." <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of videos that I've gone back to like watch about Diddy that just, that are real suspect. It, it really is. Let's see here. Sharice Santen says, I'm sick of this man fan club. Yes, he assisted with making my childhood memorable. But as a person, that man is garbage. It's not just the music, it's industry. And as a businessman as well. Yes, and that's the part I don't understand. Like... Again, lawsuit aside, right? Because everything in the lawsuit is alleged. He hasn't been found guilty in a court of law. So even if we just say, fine, just take the lawsuit away from Little Rod. Everything else that he's done in the industry, why are people acting like none of that existed? Why are people acting like people have been talking about the bad boy curse for years? Why are people acting like people have not been saying for years, if you sign with Diddy, you're wasting your time. You're not going to be seen because he wants to be the star. Everybody has said this. Everybody has a Diddy story as far as bad business deals. That alone makes him a shitty person. The fact that he was an owner of a record label and he sat there being all up in the videos, all on the records. And, you know, as funny as that is what Suge Knight said that day, when you look back at it 20-something years later, you know, everybody dismissed it as Suge Knight hating. Suge Knight was definitely, you know, feeling away, right? I'm not going to say that he wasn't. But he was being, like, he was keeping it real when he said that. Because when you think about it, that is why this sneaky mofo was on everybody's record, was in everybody's videos, because then he was able to attach himself to their publishing. So even though he didn't write anything, he didn't make the beats, but him even coming on and be like, uh, bad boy, uh, yeah. You know, doing those little ad libs, he was able to get the publishing just based off of these stupid ass ad libs. Based off of the fact that he was in the video diddy bopping and doing all this dumb shit. So Suge Knight was on to something when he said that. So yeah, I don't understand like why all these people are acting like all of a sudden like, you know, Diddy was just, you know, oh, he's done so much for black folks. What besides robbing them? Uh, it, it's it's the selective memory for me. Okay, Melanda sent 999 says, great video T, just cleaned my two bathrooms while listening, uh, while binge watching you. Thank you so much. I'm glad you like the deep dives. I appreciate it. Thank you for that. Uh, JTV says, if you ever decide to come to Alabama, you got to check out the Magic City Classic. It's an annual HBCU rivalry football game between ASU and AAMU. Okay. That definitely sounds interesting. Thank you so much for that. Uh, let's see here. Random Gaming said 999 says, Hey, T, I'm not sure if you answered, but how does your son feel about this whole brother love situation? Mama is always right. Oh, yeah. They've been, we've been having like different conversations their dad came by here um this past weekend and so they were all talking about it about like the diddy thing and you know my son was like oh y'all always be talking about our generation and the stuff that we're involved in but look at y'all's generation i'm like oh not oh not y'all turning against brother love now it's so funny now like now now gen z is finally woke to brother loves you know foolishness so yeah they've been talking about it here at the house and stuff like that you know i hate to say i told you so child but i told y'all so you know so 
dude is trash. He is. But you know, again, there, there's, there was stuff going on in every generation, right? So even like, like I was telling y'all, sometimes we knock the music that comes out like, oh, it's violent. They're doing this. They're talking about drinking lean and, you know, shooting each other. Well, they did the same thing in the nine nines and the two thousands. So, you know, there was good and bad in every genre and everything that was going on from music to movies and stuff like that. So. But it's, it is very interesting, though, to see like Gen Z and how they're handling the whole Diddy thing, because nobody loved Diddy more than Gen Z. Oh, they love Brother Love. Oh, they used to drag me and, you know, call me everything but a child of God, honey, defending Brother Love and saying I was mean. And, you know, he's just showing love and you're just so mean to him. And you're always talking bad about Brother Love. And I'm like, first of all, simmer down. Y'all weren't even here when he was uh, puffy, okay? Y'all know him as Brother Love. We know him as Puffy, okay? Y'all don't know about the stampede that happened at the college. That's how we were introduced to this weirdo. <laughs> and he's been on our radar ever since. So I, like I tell you, I don't argue with children who are my kids' age. I'm not arguing with kids who are in pampers when more money, more problems came out. So y'all can be mad. But everything I've been saying over the past five years about this man has been coming to pass. And again, lawsuit aside, Lawsuit aside, because even before Mace dropped that that uh, freestyle, I was telling y'all that the publishing was in Diddy's mama and Justin's name, and Justin was in Pampers in the studio. She Mace will tell you, Mace is always giving uh, me props. So let me read a few more, and I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. It's almost, oh, it's been two hours. Time to go. Uh, let's see here. So I hope that answered your question, Random Gaming. So thank you. Uh, Maria Moranson 10 says, that lady J-Lo getting drugged. But honestly, she's been overdue for a dragon. Selena and Ashanti gave her a career. Miss Jana, Miss Jenna from the block and her connection with Puffy. Yeah, J-Lo has done her dirt over the years. She's been able to skate by. But to be fair, because I'm always going to be fair, uh, they didn't give her her career. Okay? Okay. Uh, she did take a lot from, you know, playing Selena. She definitely, you know, blew up behind that. Ashanti definitely lended her voice to J-Lo. But before J-Lo was ever singing and in the movies, she was a background dancer on A Living Color. Okay, she was a choreographer. She was a dancer. She was in the Janet Jackson video. That's the way love goes. That was J-Lo in that video. So she, she's, you know, she's been doing her thing for years. I'm not going to take that from her. So she didn't just pop up singing and being in the movies. You know what I'm saying? But she definitely uh, had the gun that night. She definitely snuck the gun in. Per Wendy Williams. So she's not that innocent. She's just able to get away with stuff because she's a white passing Latina. And as soon as everything came out, with Diddy in the club shooting, oh, she went right back to her white side. Remember she was with Diddy, she had on the bandanas with the bling and you know, I, I, I'm still Jenny from the block, ain't no rocks, you know, all that bullshit. She was so hood and saying nigga, you know what I'm saying? And cause I'm real. But as soon as that happened, oh, she went back white. Ran, you ran to Ben Affleck and you know what I'm saying? You didn't hear nothing else about her for years. Didn't see Diddy, wasn't around Diddy. Oh, she went back to being a white passing Latina. But when she was running with him, oh yeah, she was trying to be about that life. She was trying to be his ride or die. Yeah, I remember that damn white bandana. She was always rocking with the little crop tops and the white jeans. I mean, she looked good, don't get me wrong. But yeah, she tried to act real hood. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Wendy wasn't lying. Wendy caught that out years ago, that she's the one who, that's how the gun got in the club. But you know, shit. It shines over it, I'm over it. You ain't about to stress me out over some shit, ain't got nothing to do with me. Shit, so obviously Shine, you know, forgave them. He performed at the Bad Boy 25, you know, anniversary. And isn't me, do Shine look good? I'm sorry, like, I didn't think he was really cute when he was younger. He just, the, the deep voice, sounded like Biggie. So I just, you know, whatever. But now... He is, I mean, he's just the glow up, the glow up. When I was editing that video, I said, okay, Shine, 
He do. He looks really dirty, Kelly. He look good now. He was on that Tamron Hall interview. So, he, I don't know. The glow up. It's the glow up for me. Shine looks good. He really does. He looks a lot better now in his season age than he did when he was younger. Teeth are nice and straight now. Got that salt and pepper gray. He looks body on point. Yeah, he was. Okay, it's not just me. Because I'm like, he didn't. He wasn't doing it for me back in the day. But now. I think he's married and has children. I'm just saying. He, he was looking really good. And you can just see he, he's found peace. He's found peace, you know. Him and his father, they're in a better place. You know, his father treated him like the bastard child because the mama was a side chick when she got pregnant with him. So the father wasn't claiming him. But him and his daddy, they're in a better place. You know, I, he's like real high up there in Belize. He's doing his thing. You know, he, he grew up. He grew up. You know what I'm saying? It's messed up that he had to go to prison for all them years, but I'm, I'm glad that he didn't allow it to turn him bitter. You know what I'm saying? He's just moving on and doing what he needs to do. So shout out to Shine for that glow up, child. No, I did not get moist, Tanya. Y'all are messy. <laughs> Y'all are so messy. I'm just, I was thinking back to the deep dive. Like, yeah, Shine was looking. I'm not messing. I got a lot of <laughs> I'm not messing with y'all. I'm just saying. I was just thinking back to that deep dive. Like, damn, he was looking really good. He was. Next. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Y'all are a mess. Um, let me see here. Renato says, I don't see people attacking Dan Schneider the way they're doing Diddy. I wonder why. Who are these people that you don't see attacking Dan Schneider? I know you're not talking about me. Because I can pull up videos that I did seven years ago calling out Nickelodeon. I can pull up live streams that I did years ago calling out Dan Schneider, talking about an open secret, talking about the dark side of Nickelodeon and Disney. So I don't control what people choose to talk about on social media. The only person I control is myself and I have hit on every last one of those topics. I have called out these white men. I have, you can go through my archives. I have videos. I was probably one of the few black YouTubers that was really covering the Harvey Weinstein situation. Even that lunatic, um, what's his name, FTX, Band Sam Bateman Freed, when that broke, I mean, we had a whole Discord meeting. People didn't know what the hell I was talking about. I said, oh, shit's about to hit the fan. The crypto bros are about to shut the fuck up because it's going down. I cover all news here. So I, I don't just keep my feet on black folks, black men. I talk about it all. So, um, yeah, I talk about everybody. Nobody to me is beyond reproach. Not Dan Schneider, not Diddy. You know what I'm saying? It would be nice if the black media covered a wide range of like, you know, different news that affects everyone, but it is what it is. At the end of the day, people have the right to hold Diddy accountable in the same way Dan Schneider and Brian Peck. You know, the industry is dirty. So, but I know for a fact on my channel, I've covered all these people. So I can't control what other platforms cover and don't cover, but I personally have covered all of these people. So in case you know you're new here. Uh, let's see here. Kiera sent 10 says, finally live, been watching you since your little Snoop video. Oh, wow. So you're definitely an OG. I still listen to little Snoop's music every now and then when it comes on. Long live Snoop. Thank you so much. I appreciate the super chat, sis. That situation was sad. Very, very talented young man. Could freestyle his ass off. Amazing rapper. Hopefully he wasn't Meek Mill sacrifice child. But that's a whole nother video. Um, somebody said Jenny from the Glock. <laughs> Wait! Somebody said Jenny with the Glock. Bree Young, you are a mess. Said Jenny with the Glock. That is too funny. Thank you for the super chat, sis. Y'all are a mess. Uh, let's see here. Brittany says, P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Papa Diddy Pop. That is my favorite part of Diddy's Bad Boy for Life video. But Diddy was doing his dirt for a good minute. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you for the super chat, sis. Uh, Destiny sent 499 says, T, 
why do you always have to get off? It's like a breath of fresh air seeing a black woman with legs closed and eyes open. Ooh, I like how you put how you put that together. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, and thank you for the support. Now, I really just appreciate y'all supporting the real, and you know, like I said, I, I'm gonna keep doing me, and you know, just keep giving y'all my opinions and just being real and keeping my integrity. Like I said, I don't care if it takes me another year to get to a million. I'm gonna do it the right way and just keep it. Keep it real. And if the algorithm wants to mess with me because I'm having real conversations and real discussions and holding people accountable, then so be it. But um, to me, nobody's beyond reproach. And again, I don't do my commentary or make videos to like necessarily like laugh or bring people down. I think for me, everything's a teaching lesson, right? Like I always tell you guys, don't just sit back and laugh and key key, you know, learn from the mistakes of other people. So that way you're not destined to repeat them. You know, I think that's like the, the biggest takeaway from any video or any topic that I talk about, really learn from the things that people are doing and the situation that they find themselves in, you know, because sometimes their downfall can be your wake up call. You know how many young kids are out here like low key pimping and you know selling themselves or kind of low key pimping their girlfriends on OnlyFans or giving a bunch of girls rides from strip club to strip club and they're not realizing that you know you don't took a bunch of girls across the city lines you know from Wisconsin to Minnesota wherever and that technically is considered sex trafficking. So I, I just hope that a lot of this stuff wakes people up because people don't understand that the laws are changing. We're in a different day and age. This is not the 90s. You know what I mean? We had the Me Too movement. We had the Time's Up movement. And unfortunately, people had to move accordingly. You had to move a certain way. And people are not playing anymore. You have to be very, very careful. You know, and for young men, you have to protect yourself. You know, and I've been saying that for years. Even You know, we talk so casually about sex and hooking up. But make sure you're hooking up with the right person. Make sure you have permission. Make sure you have consent. You know, you might have to start doing a little form and shit, like, you know, signatures and video because you don't want somebody coming back six months from now looking for a bag talking about you art them and you sexually assaulted them. Like, we're getting to that point. So, again, learn from the moves that these folks are making. And just, you know, try your heart. Nobody's perfect, of course, right? But try your hardest not to get caught up in that. That's why I tell y'all all the time, don't sit there and envy people. Everything that glitters is not gold, especially on social media. People are only going to post highlight reels of their life. They're not going to post when they're sick. They're not going to post when they're depressed. They're not going to post when they're going through it, when they're struggling. No, they're going to post, you know, when they're living their best life, when they're going shopping and, you know, showing you their shopping sprees and their red bottoms and all their bags. But ask yourself, how are they getting that money? Are they actually working a nine to five? Is somebody who's actually just working a nine to five, do they really have the extra money to just go spend $5,000 on a handbag? So stop comparing yourself to people who are not living an honest lifestyle. And again, not knocking anybody who's getting it off of OnlyFans or, you know, getting shitted on in Dubai, do you boo, okay? But people need to stop acting like there's no consequences to that lifestyle, that everything is peaches and cream because it just takes you down a, a rabbit hole. It takes you down, honestly, a lot of these women do end up in this whole sex trafficking cycle. Where now, because you had to keep up this lifestyle and this front as an influencer on social media, now you are selling yourself to the highest bidder. Carisha, Daphne Joy, allegedly. So don't envy any of these people. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with living a regular degular life. It's a lot safer that way. So y'all, I hope you guys enjoyed this stream. We had over 12,000 people in here. That means a lot to me. I really, really just appreciate y'all's support and y'all's time and just, you know, just everything. So once again, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. 
hit the notifications. Um, if you want to watch any of my deep dives, they can be found on my YouTube membership page. I also have them on Patreon and on my Discord as well. So on that note, you guys, I am out. Everybody have a good evening and I'll talk to y'all later.